Can we withstand the onslaught? Well, the initial onslaught at least. That is the big question in today. The very first episode in the new Let's Play series here was Strategic Command World War II War in Europe. I want to thank everybody that voted on the prologue, kind of get you guys involved, see which direction you want to go. And between, and you can already tell by the title and, and thumbnail and how I entered it, but between the comments and then the upvotes of said comments, the decision is we are going with the allies in this playthrough. Uh, it, at the end, it wasn't too close, but it was close enough to make it interesting all the way down to the wire. And I'm looking forward to playing as the allies because honestly, I haven't done that very often. I, my personal play style tends to be... I prefer to be on the attack rather than defense, and the allies for the longest time will be on the defense. So what today's episode, the first episode will be, we'll obviously get the first moves out of the way, which will be the Axis, and I'll show you the quick setup here, and then we'll talk about strategy and what to do. So it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. But uh, I have marginal faith in my abilities. And uh, let me know down in the comments, for those of you that are veteran Strategic Command World War II War in Europe players, if you have any tips and so on, because I'm a little rusty, trying to get back into the swing of things. So I had looked at a few of the mods, but I just want to go with the standard Storm over Europe. Now, there are minor and major and decisive victory conditions but the main thing is the allies is we basically need to not lose Moscow and London and Paris by the end of it all. And the end of it all is 1947 is actually where it could end, but you could end it before then. And our drive will be towards Berlin. Uh, Rome as well, but Berlin is the major, major uh, target to have. If we look at the victory conditions, for decisive victory as allies, we need to control Berlin, Rome, Warsaw, Paris, London, Moscow, and Washington, D.C. The Axis for a decisive victory. Now, again, you can also get minor and major and marginal victories and all that kind of stuff as well. But the Axis need Berlin, Rome, Warsaw, Paris, London, Moscow, Leningrad, Stalingrad, and Cairo. So this does force the Axis AI to operate in uh, North Africa. So that's, that's very, very important there. But our main thing is Berlin's the key one. Don't lose London, don't lose Moscow. Washington DC would be very difficult for them to land all the way over there, though not impossible, but it would be very, very difficult. All right, so we're gonna play the campaign. We are picking the allies and I'm gonna play all of these. I'm gonna control everything you can. Say that something is controlled by the AI, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go with intermediate, no computer bonuses. We're going to go straight up, just average difficulty because I'm not that great of a player to bump it up. Uh, maybe if you guys enjoy this and the series does well, you can do another playthrough as the Axis, maybe modded and add some difficulty there as well. So that is a possibility for the future. We're not going to do 3D units. Instead, there is a mod that comes with the game now that got updated. So we'll just use the land counter style. Other than that, everything looks like we want to go and let's get going. So first thing obviously that we're going to see here is what the Axis does, specifically Germany. And once they have made their move, we'll talk a little bit about strategy and uh, some of the key points and what we decide to do. I do like these counters. You can see here comes the German assault on Poland. That is obviously going to happen and we will lose Poland. Uh, I mean, there's just no way around it. The, the German forces are far too strong for the Polish. I like these modded uh, counters. You can also have regular counters that are just the NATO counters, but I like kind of these uh, where they could show the tank and the, the airplane as well as the the infantry um, or the units itself have their own. So here you can see the Germans are just coming in from East Prussia and just just rolling, rolling the Polish 
military here in their inevitable march towards Warsaw. And we'll kind of talk about that once this is done, but they're just going to completely annihilate us. And it's a pretty easy move in the beginning for also for an Axis player to take Poland. Um, now, the, the goal here is obviously as the allied players to try to make these advances in Poland as well as then eventually in France as costly and as long as possible for the Axis because, well, the Soviet Union and the United States are not in yet. So kind of got to delay as long as possible. So the United Kingdom now has declared war on Germany. France has declared war on Germany because, of course, the, the, that all precipitated that. British industry and trade start switching to military production. France increases industrial mobilization for the war effort. Combat losses summary. So now it will be our turn. Lutsch army destroyed. Pomorzhia army destroyed. Pomorska cavalry brigade destroyed. Military activity summer. Uh, so here you can see everything that was captured. Uh, Bidgosch. I'm going to completely butcher these names, by the way. Lutsch got captured. Danzig. The port got captured. United Kingdom declared war. We already went through all of that. Report on Allied War Aims. For the second time this century, we're at war with Germany. While France concentrates on reinforcing her armies and Poland fights for her survival, we must prepare for the long struggle ahead. It will not be an easy task, and our immediate aims must be to assist our French allies while also protecting our sea lanes and our position in the Middle East. So let's do our duty to king and country. Roll up our sleeves and get the job done. Here we've got the UK Mediterranean Report. Report on Italian preparations for war. Intelligence reports that Mussolini will start mobilizing should our positions in the Mediterranean appear to be poorly defended. Recommendation, maintain units at Gibraltar, Malta, Cairo, Tunis, and Damascus. You can see that here very nicely. Decision time. Now, this is a part of uh, Strategic Command. If you saw my World War I mini playthrough, you will remember a lot of these. Secretary of the State of War, Leslie uh, Hor Belicia. Now that we are at war, it is expected of us that we will send a British expeditionary force to France, just as we did in the last war. Arrangements are in place for the BEF to be transported across the Channel and deployed around Rouen on the 1st of October 1939. Once there, these forces could provide boosts to French morale, which is rather fragile. We do, If we do not send the BEF to France... The French national morale will fall by 1,000 points. The USA will move 5 to 8% away from the Allies. Would you like to deploy the BEF in France? Yes. Or risk the consequences of deploying it in the UK instead? No. I mean, we are going to definitely send the British Expeditionary Force. Red Army Headquarters. Now that the German invasion of Poland is well underway, it is important that we do not show weakness and let the Germans gain the whole country. It is therefore important that we fulfill our side of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact by marching into Poland, even though it will cause some slight harm to our relationship with the UK and France. Would you like to order the Red Army to prepare, prepare to advance into Poland? Absolutely, and I'll get into that once uh, we get into strategy talk here in a minute. So here we see the overall map. We've got the US over here, Soviet Union here. And everything is flashing because all these units can act. So we are going to head over here. And we are going to start on the French front, on the Maginot line right away. We can see we have armies. We have a core here and then a core down here. Now, we immediately, one of the key things we need to do is reinforce everybody. That is the main thing to do here as the French. So we are going to max reinforce everybody. I mean, it's going to cost us all of our MPPs, but really that's something that has to be done here to kind of help against this um, inevitable German invasion. And they're not, we're not going to be able to reinforce everybody, but it's, it's kind of bit by bit by bit. So we have three MPPs left, so we are done here. Now, what do we do with the French? Well, we need a headquarters unit down here on the front. So we are going to move the headquarters over here. 
then we will move these units into place kind of behind, kind of help fortify here. We've got our, um, we've got some tactical bombers here. They're not going to be able to inflict much damage. We're going to move them a little bit further. We also have these classic fighters. Now these fighters we will move uh, right over here as well. And we'll just move these into position. Not just here along the Maginot line, but we have to expect that eventually the Germans will come in through Belgium and the Netherlands. So we'll move that unit up there. Uh, the the core, the reserve core in Paris, we will keep there. And there's really nothing else we can do here. Then in the south. So, one of the strategies I have, go out a little bit, is we look at France. Now, Germany is going to amass their forces here and push through Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, and here along this fortified line. So, we, the goal is to make this as slow and hard and costly on the Germans as possible. At the same time, we have units down in the south of France, and Italy is right here. One of my goals is also to preoccupy the Italians with a small French force moving in from the south here. The goal to preoccupy the Italians here, it'll divert some of their attention away from the Balkans and specifically also North Africa. Um, otherwise, they run the risk of us just easily going through here. So we're going to move uh, this core up there and move this small core in here. And then we have the Alp army here as well. We're going to move them along that line. The garrison's going to stay there. Then here we've got a battleship. Now there are rough seas out here. So if we look at it, we've got our battleship unit here. We have a destroyer here, the terrible destroyer. Well, that's great. Um, I do want to move this destroyer right in there and just have it kind of sitting. We'll put it right off of our coast here. I think that's good enough. So the destroyer will sit there. The battleship will come out as well. Now, really don't want to put it in the middle of the ocean, but we will move them just right over here near the Channel Islands. So that way we can help a little bit with the channel here. And we'll get through the British movement next, but we're going to focus here right now on the French uh, because they're technically the easiest. So here we've got a battleship, a submarine, and a light cruiser. Trying to see where we have some other convoy lines that are important. Here is a main convoy line for Germany, so from Norway. Here's one from Sweden. Disrupting German convoys will be important, but that will be up to the Royal Navy. Down here, what I want to do is... So here we go. Seven allied naval units within the zone risks Italy... With seven allied units within this zone risks Italy mobilizing. Okay. Well, at this point, we're going to leave that be, but I do want to move this light cruiser. I'm just going to move them out here. We're going to move this battleship to right here, and this sub. We're going to do with the subs here. We will put them on hunt or silent. Actually, what we'll do is we will put them on silent and just place them right here off the coast of North Africa, where we also have troops, of course. Here we've got a garrison in Gibraltar that we definitely need to mm, defend and strengthen. We've got a heavy cruiser here that we will leave where it is. 
And here we've got a our subs we just moved. We've got the small unit. Keep a unit within five X's of here. So we need Tunis strengthened, Algiers strengthened. We will need to send troops to Gibraltar. Then I think that almost takes care of it. Here we've got a Syrian core from France in Damascus that we will simply leave sitting in Damascus. So with that, I think we've done all the French movements we can. And now we will move to Great Britain. And here, we'll leave the garrison unit here for now. We will leave our fighters here. Here we've got our strategic bombers. Here we have our tactical bombers. These can help against a possible invasion. So what we'll actually do is we'll move those guys in there. We'll move those guys in there. So this way we have our fighters here in case we need to help out here. We've got a battleship here, heavy cruiser, a battle cruiser, a destroyer. What do we have here in the north. We've got a nice group here. Carrier, light cruiser, battleship, another battle cruiser. Ah, here we've got a submarine. And we will put them in hunt mode. And so we will move them kind of out this way. There we go. So the goal with the sub is to hit the convoys and make life as difficult as possible for the Germans that way. So this group here, I think we will move out into the North Sea at this point. So we'll take the Nelson and just move it out here into the North Sea. Then we've got our carrier here, glorious carrier. Move it right here. A light cruiser. Position it here. And then this battle cruiser here. So, oh, didn't want to do that. So we've got a nice uh, fleet here in the North Sea. Then here is another light cruiser. I think we'll just leave here for now. A destroyer and heavy cruiser. Now the destroyer, um, the sea is rather choppy. We're going to move the destroyer right up here because we also want to hunt the U-boats. And that's where also this heavy cruiser, we'll bring that heavy cruiser up here to Scapa Flow. Have him positioned there. And then here you can see all of the convoys coming in from Iraq. Uh, the rest of the British Empire, Egypt, and Canada. This carrier unit, I think we will move well, just down here for right now and leave it. Then we've got a battle cruiser and a destroyer. We'll move the destroyer right here into the English Channel. Uh, and that heavy cruiser will sit there. And then we've got the Rodney battleship here as well that we will just place right there. So that takes care of the movement here. Gibraltar is very important. We will need to move some units eventually when we get them down in this direction. And we'll talk about that. So we need to control Gibraltar for sure and Malta. Reason why is because it secures our convoys and disrupts supply for the Axis in North Africa. So it is extremely important. So here we've got another battleship. We've got two battleships sitting here. And we can kind of just have them sit here for right now. So I'm not, I'm not going to move them for right now. Here we've got an anti-air unit sitting on Malta as well as a heavy cruiser in a destroyer that we're just going to keep where they are. Continuing on down here. Very, very important. We've got a battleship. We've got a light cruiser here and a royal carrier here. We're just going to keep them sitting here. 
You can see a sandstorm coming in. Now we could move. We've got a headquarter unit here in Alexandria. Cairo, we will keep these guys here. Uh, cannot reinforce them right now. So we have a core sitting in Cairo and an army sitting in El Alamein. But as long as the Italians are not at war yet, don't really need to risk moving them. I can actually. You know what? We're going to move them up here. We're going to move them towards Sidbaram and just kind of sit here near the Halfaya Pass. An important aspect in this game, of course, is um, the uh, supply. So you can see six is the key. If you are at six supply, you can reinforce to max. Uh, anything below that, you start not being able to uh, reinforce up to max. Max is being 10. So that's that's really important. Headquarters improve that. So this headquarter unit in Alexandria, I'm going to start moving them out as well. So we are going to... Uh, we'll just move them right here. So we're going to move that headquarter unit and the WDF army out towards Sid Baram and... Mursa as well and just have them sit here so we've got a sub unit here I think we're gonna sit the sub we're gonna move the sub out here to Cyprus and just have them sitting there other than that I think we're good to go here we've got some units I mean this is part of our territory so we may want to send someone out here to Kuwait eventually Garrison in Cyprus is looking good. And I think that takes care of that. Now looking at the Soviets. Because the, the strategy with the Soviets is, of course, we need to invade Poland. We need to capture as much as Poland as possible. So we create a buffer zone between the Soviet Union and Germany. Because we need to clearly protect areas like Kiev... Um, Dnipropetrovsk, very important. Stalingrad, extremely important. Then, of course, Moscow needs to be protected. And up here, Leningrad. Now, we're not at war with the, the Axis at this point. So there's no real reason to become overly aggressive towards them. But we need to prepare because it will happen eventually. So we're going to... Just move these guys into position and move towards the Polish border. Now what we can do in diplomacy is if we look at Poland, if we could find Poland, I can't because I cannot do um, diplomacy as the Soviets yet. But what I can do is move units and that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep these guys sitting down here. Because eventually we'll have to deal with the Romanians entering the war on the side of Germany. But this core will move up this direction. We'll keep these guys down here. We'll keep this garrison in Sevastopol, without a doubt. Uh, we will keep our 6th Army in Stalingrad. Definitely need to keep them there. Uh, seventh Army, we can move these guys up. In fact, we will just move them further up. The Army in Kiev, we'll move them down here. We've got a core up this way. We're, like I said, we're just going to slowly move some of these units down here. Staying on the road, very important. Also move our headquarters there. Um, we'll take the 22nd Army, move them up here. We'll also move this fighter unit to the front. We will keep Moscow defended as it is. Leningrad defended as it is. This unit from Volkov, we will move closer to Leningrad. And what can we do here with them? Can't really do anything with them at this point. We can't build fortification. We need engineers for that. We'll move that army down south. Now I think we are in a good position. 
having moved everybody. But now, for those of you not familiar with Strategic Command, you have something here called MPP. Uh, so these are your points with which you can reinforce units, you can upgrade units, um, and all that good stuff. So uh, that's all important. You can also purchase units, um, uh, work on diplomacy and research as well. Uh, you also need it for certain movements, for amphibious landings, things like that. Um, here you've got reinforcement costs, elite reinforcements, upgrades, operational movement, transports, long range, as well as short range amphibious transports. We can rename it, look at the properties, and tell them to go to sleep. So the strategy here will be very simple with the Soviet Union. We'll go kind of like this grand tactical map is to move into Poland. Oh, I still have some units up here I want to move. But we will move into Poland here eventually and kind of create a buffer zone between us and the Germans and then build multiple lines of defense back to Moscow and hopefully sucking them in so we can counterpunch them, maybe even from the south, depending on what happens in Romania and the Balkans. With the British, we just need to build up our troop forces. We need to send the BEF, obviously it'll land in France. We need to reinforce in North Africa. We need to be uh, ready for the inevitable Italian invasions, both in Malta and through Libya, be that here in uh, the French part of Africa or the British part of Africa. We need to desperately keep hold of Gibraltar and protect the convoy route. So hopefully by sending these navies in these positions, we can do just that. Now, let's go as the British player. I'm not going to purchase any units. Instead, we are going to go into research. So we're already researching infantry weapons, advanced tanks, heavy bombers, very important, long-range aircraft, and artillery weapons, anti-submarine warfare, very important. Uh, we have insufficient funds. I should have seen that because it's 150 and we have 125 MPP. So we can bump up artillery weapons and anti-aircraft defense. So we can work on research there. We can increase our command and control, our infantry warfare. This is very important. It's like your, your rifles and so on. Armored warfare, aerial warfare, we can't do that at this point. Amphibious warfare will be very important because you will, that will help. That'll boost your amphibious transports. Spying intelligence logistics, very important. Uh, because what each new level of logistics research reduces operational movement and regular transport cost by 10%. Also increases the build limit for HQs and transport by one level. So it's, and logistics level equals HQ minimum supply distribution. Production technology, very, very important. Industrial technology, also very important. I think what we're going to do here, we're going to invest in infantry warfare. So that uses up all of our MPPs. As the United States, there's with 35, there's not much we can do. Soviet Union with 45, nothing really. And Poland as well with 25. So that takes care of the first opening move in terms of not really being able to do a whole lot as the allied forces, reinforcing the Maginot line. And now we will see what the Axis does next. Let me know in the comments if, um, you know, as far as our overall strategy, what your thoughts are. One of the areas I'm very curious about is if we can launch a French invasion of Northern Italy to distract the Italians then long enough. But we'll first just fortify here uh, along the border with Italy. Yes, we want to end this turn. Canada has now declared war on Germany. Also very important, because then Canada mobilizes. Operation Peking, evacuation of Polish destroyers to the UK has now happened, which is also very important. You can see here's a Polish unit. Canadian supply convoys to the UK begin. And co convoys are important because it helps you with MPPs. Here you can see UK and miners collect 88 MPP, so a, a total for the British of 195. France collects 111, the United States 67, Soviet Union 52, and Poland 47. Uh, we lost 50 by deploying the BEF in France. And now it is back to the Axis turn. 
further, moving into Poland and strengthening their forces. You can see that they are reinforcing along the Maginot uh, with France. Uh, you could just see then those turning dark and bumping up to 10. So they are reinforcing and we need to continue to reinforce our armies there. If we're only facing them with cores, we will have a problem. Enemy contact. So they're not getting very far. We'll just scoot in here. We can see a little bit better. Enemy contact there. I think I did forget to move the Polish. <laughs> but that's okay. Poland's going to lose anyway. Um, they're going to get encircled. I mean, it's really just a matter of trying to hold them up at this point. Uh, Poland will fall. That is, that happens 100% of 100% of the time. Uh, I have yet to ever play this game as the Axis and not roll through Poland. Here you can see those units are now encircled. They are cut off from their supply. And that's a, a huge, huge problem. These guys will just deteriorate over time. As the Axis, honestly, you don't even really have to worry about these guys too much. Because they are cut off from supply. Your main drive has to be towards Warsaw at this point. Polish morale suffers from battlefield losses. Well, that's to be expected. The Red Army begins crossing the border into Poland. Also very important. Polish morale plummets as the news spreads that the Red Army has crossed the border. So we've got a cavalry brigade has been destroyed, the Krakow army destroyed, cavalry brigade destroyed, cavalry brigade destroyed. Uh, a few more towns captured. And we already saw the previous summaries. So now I won't forget the Polish. These guys here, I mean, they'll suffer suffer losses. We'll just try to try to get them out of there. Uh, none of these will do anything with those two garrison units. Those as well. The first numbers always represent your losses. The second number would be the enemy losses. Yeah, there's there's not much we can we can hope to do at this point. Uh, what I'm just going to try to do is move these guys in and around. Uh, interceptors, so we try to hurt some of their communication. A little bit of recon as well, but we will we will keep them here. This is a tactical bomber. So unfortunately, we can just not inflict any meaningful damage on any unit with these guys. Interceptors will come in. I mean, that's that's all very helpless at this point. We'll just fly them back. There's not much they can do. Uh, this mechanized unit, we'll just draw them back. Uh, here we've got a small army. We're going to draw them back as well. Of course, now we've got the the Soviets sitting there along the border. Not much to do. Here is a garrison unit that we will just move down south. And other than that, there really isn't much you can do as Poland because you will not inflict any, any damage. I realize the Soviet Union, I forgot these guys up here. You have garrisons along here. I'll just leave those garrisons. There's not much to do there. We do have a core here. And I will move that core to the south. Because, of course, Finland could become an issue. And now we will just simply move these units closer to Poland. Headquarter unit, very, very important. So they're all going to come... Actually, I'm going to use those guys and move down south. Have them move that way. Just along the road, because we do have the supply there. I think that's, that's good enough. I think that covers everybody we needed to cover there. So now we will head back here to our French line. And we will need to reinforce as much as possible. It's going to cost us 62 MPP. We need to reinforce 
our armies here. Can we reinforce any further? We can. And that's it as far as reinforcements go. We just kind of have to sit there at this point. There's not much else we can really do. With these guys, there's not... Just kind of have to have to sit there and hope. Going to move that headquarter unit up. And as you saw, when you click on it, it lights up who's under its command. I can change that to manual, and I can decide who it controls. And I would do that once we get closer here to the front. Probably position the HQ right in here. No, see somewhere. We'll move... Move those guys there, right around Nossi, right, right in here. So it's not right on the front, but close enough that it can provide some support there. Uh, this core, I think, we'll just leave where it is. This army will move in there, and there's not much else we can provide here at this point. Uh, we're just patrolling right now. Yeah, it's just kind of, kind of everyone's kind of sitting around. Here we have the Polish Navy. Uh, we could upgrade them to port. Eh, we'll just leave them as is. There's not, not a ton to do. We did have some units here in North Africa that we were moving. Specifically down here. I'm going to continue moving them onto that Italian front. Everybody else is just kind of sitting around and delaying as long as possible. Yeah, we also want to make sure that not too many of the minor allies come in. So we'll go into research again here as the British. Rep Max, we can't pump in any more into infantry weapons. Advanced tanks, heavy bombers we could increase, artillery weapons we could increase, anti-submarine warfare. This is important. Uh, what it says down here, you can see it. Each new level of anti-submarine warfare improves the sub-attack and sub-defense values of maritime bombers for all types of surface naval combat units apart from battleships. Only their sub-defense values improve. Also reduces an attack sub's current dive percentage by 10%. Given the strength of the German U-Bote, that's very, very important to do. I think we've done enough there. Diplomacy, we can still expend some. Uh, possibly. Uh, could work on getting Bulgaria on our side. Finland would be an important one that they don't turn. Keep Iraq close to us. So, uh, United States, Soviet Union would just cost too many... MPPs at this point. So I think we could invest into Norway, get them on our side. Sweden would be another important one. Norway and Sweden are both providing Germany with resources. So if we can get Sweden on our side, we have insufficient funds. Oh, it's 50. We have 45. So there's, there's really nothing else we can do there. French are spent... The Polish, honestly, Poland, uh, there's really not a much you can do. I feel bad for you. I wonder if we can do any reinforcing. We can't do, we can't do anything. So that will end our turn. And now we will do one more Axis turn. And I think then we will complete this very first episode. Yes, we want to end the turn. Polish morale continues to suffer from the German Blitzkrieg. That's to be expected. British Expeditionary Force arrives in France. See? Right there. We'll just kind of scroll in a little bit. Scientists report progress in logistics development from 13% to 30%. There we go. We get 253 MPP as the UK, 114 as France, 67 as the US, 42 as USSR, and 41 as Poland. Germany continues its assault on Poland here. I mean, they're holding out as best they can. I mean, even controlling Poland, to be perfectly honest, 
there's just not much you can you can do at the end of the day. Those bombers took some damage. That was nice. They're trying to destroy that single unit. And that army is... They're holding up nicely. You can see the Panzers assaulting Warsaw. That, the garrison there took quite the hit. If they break into Warsaw, then, then this is going to deteriorate super fast. You can see that, that army out there is now done. Now that core takes some damage. Army moving just to the north, and that is a heavy hit against that army right there. So they take as good as they get. I mean, again, if we can just make these German advances as long, slow, and painful for them as possible, the better it is for us in the long run. You know, Panzer's moving in and destroyed that core. Now further assault on the garrison in Warsaw. They're just getting getting routed in. And again, these are these are kind of the expectations in this game. Oh, there come there are Italians now. Taking on Poland as well. I think those were Italians. This may have been Hungarians, actually. Now that I think about it. Looking where it is. Oh no, those are Slo Slovakian troops. Sorry, my bad. Not Hungary, not Italy, that's Slovakia, I believe. So the Poznan army was destroyed, the Viskov army was destroyed, Krakow was captured, Poznan as well. The importance of the BEF in maintaining French morale. To stiffen French morale in the event of a German invasion, we should maintain a force no less than two units in France. Better still, five or more units if they can be made available. Deploy these to defend Paris, northeastern France, and the Maginot Line. If we don't do this, then should the Germans invade France, French morale is likely to fall rapidly could lead to a premature surrender. The French are relying on us to help them, just like we did in 1914. Let's not let them down. Prime Minister Edouard Daladier. The French Communist Party has denounced the war as an imperialist conflict, and their deputies have called for us to make peace with Hitler. If we aren't careful, then communist influence in the army will grow. This would lead to disaffection and disruption, which would reduce the efficiency of our armed forces. It is therefore recommended that we act decisively to ban the party and arrest its militants. If we do so, we will prevent disaffection in the army and our national morale will increase by a thousand points. The USSR would see this as a hostile move. It could be expected to swing three to five percent away from us. Would you like to ban the French Communist um, Party and detain the militants? So the French Communist Party was significantly weakened by the signing of the molotov ribbentrop Pact in August 1939 as many militants struggled to understand why the USSR had aligned itself with Germany. By saying yes to this, France may be able to hold out a little longer. We have to say yes, because we have to hold out as long as possible. Decision. Red Army Headquarters. In order to decrease Leningrad's vulnerability to attack from the north and to weaken the Finnish army, it is suggested that we force Finland to hand over some territory to us. We can demand the Karelian Isthmus, the area north of Leningrad, and the port of Hanko, to the west of Helsinki. Would you like to force Finland to transfer the Karelian Isthmus and Hanko to our control? Hmm. Now this will swing Finland heavily towards the Axis and open another front for the Soviet Union. Now, of course, the winter war against Finland was very costly on this USSR. I am tempted to go with no. Honestly. Um, to delay that as long as possible. I'm not overly worried. Maybe as the Soviet Union will invest some diplomacy with Finland. So we're, I'm going to go with no here. We're going to go ahistorical and say no to this. So we have a new unit, first engineers of the USSR. And I will move them all the way over here. We will deploy them in Leningrad. Why? Because we want to fortify Leningrad and to create fortifications you need engineers. So, there we have the situation on October 14th, 1939. Germany is clearly pushing through Poland quite easily. We are just maneuvering into position to deal with a threat from Germany as well as Italy and the Mediterranean. Our move will be next in the next episode. So, if you enjoyed this one, please hit like. Subscribe if you're new, not to miss out on anything on the channel. And drop a comment down below. Do you think us allies have any chance here against a very powerful Axis? Till next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.